Hello and welcome to this blocking video. In this video I'm going to show you how to block a sweater. The sweater is part lace and part stocking stitch and I'm going to be using my blocking wires and my nip blockers and uh, some pins and I also have some pins and I also have a tape measure. I've soaked the sweater in lukewarm water, rolled it up into a towel and then um, I'm just squeezing out as much water as possible. So this sweater was knitted in two pieces, so the front and the back was knitted separately and the stitches were added for the sleeves at the underarm. So the front of the um, body and the sleeves was worked in one and the back of the body and the sleeves was worked in one piece. So it was just two pieces and my sample knitter joined the shoulders by doing a three needle cast off before she sent the sample back to me. I could have blocked it the way it was, just as one large piece being joined by the shoulders, but I decided it was easier to seam the um, side seams and the underarm seam uh, before I blocked it. Um, I haven't knitted the edging around the neckline, so I have the stitches for the neckline on an interchangeable needle with my end stoppers on the end um, and then I also have to knit on edging, edgings around the armhole but I decided to do that after I have done the blocking. So normally when you knit a garment if you knit it in pieces it is usually easier to block it before you uh, sew it up. If you knit it in the round then obviously you don't have you know you won't be sewing up so you'll have to block it the way it is. The problem with blocking a garment when it's been sewed, sewn up or if it's been knitted in the round is that you're blocking two layers of fabric. So you have two layers of fabric drying on top of each other, which is fine if it's a thin yarn like this. This is a lace weight yarn, so it's fairly thin, so it won't take that long to dry. But if you're knitting a thicker sweater, say iron weight uh, or even DK, if you have two layers, it can take much longer for the garment to dry. So that is something to bear in mind um, when you're blocking. I do prefer to block things after the garment is seamed. If you block the pieces separately, you have to measure really carefully to make sure the front and the back measure the same and the sleeves measure the same. If you've already sewn it up or if it's been knitted in the round, then there is less worry about the pieces being the same because you're stretching them out at the same time. So this garment has um, a bit of lace on this side, stocking stitch in the middle and a bit of lace on this side and then the sleeves are stocking stitch and the back is exactly the same. So I'm actually going to turn it around this way so that this the hem is facing me because I will be it will take me longer to pin out the hem, so it's easier to have her facing me. And then the neckline is here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to check that I have enough blocking mats, which I don't. So I need to just put in a couple of more blocking mats to make sure that I have enough space. And then I'm just stretching this out. So I'm going to start by trying to line up the middle of the sweater roughly with the middle of my blocking mats so I know I've got plenty of space and then I'm going to take one of these blocking wires and I'm going to thread it through the top of the sleeve so just along the top sleeve uh, seam and I'm just taking it inside the fabric I'm not threading it in and out through the fabric I'm just going inside the fabric so I'm just trying to make sure I lined it up with the top seam up here. There we go. And then I'm just going to put a pin in that just to make sure that that doesn't move. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm just lining it up with the top seam here by the neckline. I may need to stretch that a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. Then I'm going to do the same with this sleeve seam on this side. So I'm just taking the blocking wire inside the fabric. You 
if you don't have blocking wires that's absolutely fine you don't need blocking wires but it is a lot easier if you do have blocking wires then i'm going to line it up with the sleeve um or shoulder seam and then down here and then before i go any further i'm actually just going to measure to make sure that the top width of this garment is um, correct i'm also on this side the sleeve is kind of sloping down a bit whereas here i've got it level with the shoulder there isn't any short row shaping or anything like that at the shoulders they just go straight across this is quite a thin yarn so uh, you don't really need short row shoulder shaping i don't think so i'm just going to this lines up with the back of the neck so i'm just going to bring this bit up a bit because it slopes down a little bit just so it's lines up a little bit better and then i'm going to measure before i go any further so i'm going to measure, measure the full width of the top of the garment so i'm going to check at the sleeve length from here which is the back of the neck to the edge is the same on each side so that's 47 47 okay then i'm going to put a um blocking wire up through the side seam and i'm going to side seam only goes up to here i'm gonna this side seam goes straight and then our stitches increased here a few stitches increased and then stitches cast onto the sleeve so what i've done is i've gone inside the side seam here and then i've just taken it out here so it comes on top of the garment so now i've got to make sure that the front and the back lines up and i find my side seam and then i'm going to just put a pin in it here i may have to stretch it a little bit more i don't know yet but i'm just going to put a pin in it there for now just to see and then i'm going to do the same thing here just to make sure that my side seam actually lines up with the edge of this wire i'm just going to put a couple of pins in here and then i'm going to do the same thing here now i don't want to stretch this garment too much because it is already quite big and i don't want it to end up being too big but at the same time i've got to make sure it looks nice and even and that the, that the lace is stretched enough okay so i'm going to put a pin in there and a pin in here blocking garments and how much you stretch them isn't quite the same as blocking shawls shawls i tend to stretch them as much as possible with garments i may not stretch them as much depending on whether it's all over lace or part lace and part stocking stitch like this so i'm going to now i'm going to measure from here down to here to make sure that they're the same on each piece Now I'm going to stretch that a little bit more just to make it 60 centimeters. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. So I'm lining up my tape measure with the um, wire at the top here. And then I need to stretch it a little bit more on this side. So what I did was I just put my pin where I need to stretch it to, and then that's it. Now you can put a wire through the bottom edge. I don't tend to like putting a wire through the bottom edge. I don't think it looks that neat. I'm going to use these knit blockers instead and they are just um, from Knit Pro and they are just a plastic piece with um, pins stuck in them basically. So this lace lines up with the back. So I just want to make sure that the front piece and the back piece of the lace lines up. Then I'm just going to put 
I'm going to the length of the front and the back I'm going to just eyeball it I'm not going to measure it all the way down I'm just going to try and eyeball it with the sides here and I'm just going to make sure I pull the front and the back piece so that when I put these nip lockers in it goes through the fabric the front and fabric for the front and the back of the sweater and then try and line them up at the bottom here so I get a smooth edge sometimes when I do this if it looks a little bit uneven after I've taken the blocking pins out or the nip lockers out I will just let it relax for a little bit and then just steam it lightly just steam it with a steam iron just to um, make sure it looks nice and even it out because sometimes when you put pins in it you may get little pin marks or it may not be 100% even um, so then I'll just steam it slightly just to neaten it up so I'm just going to put these nip lockers in along the bottom edge here and I'm putting these nip lockers in right next to each other I'm just checking that the lace on this side lines up with the front and the back it's a narrower lace panel on this side and a wider one on this side. So what I'm doing, just to make sure that that bottom edge is even, because it goes in a little bit and then down here, it kind of goes up a little bit and then down. So it's not quite even. So what I did was I measured the end here till the end here, and then did the same here. And then I'm just going along the edge here. And just measuring it's eight centimeters here and here it was eight centimeters from the edge so I'm just measuring eight centimeters on the edge of my blocking board and just putting some pins in just so that it makes it a little bit easier to make sure sometimes I'll just eyeball it but I tried that and I wasn't happy it doesn't look even to me um, so now I can work on how much I need to stretch this. You probably can't see, but there is probably a centimeter or so that I need to stretch it to make sure that the middle is level with the edges. So I'm just going to do that quickly. When I'm stretching a piece like this, um, to put the nip lockers in, quite often I'll just push it with the flat of my hand. You can use blocking wires as well for this, but I, the reason I don't like to use blocking wires for a um, straight edge like this, which is in garter stitch, is because sometimes I don't think it looks that neat. If I had eyelets or something along the edge and I could thread the wire through the eyelets, it look be looks better. When it's garter stitch or stocking stitch right to the edge, I don't think it looks that neat always if I put the um, blocking wire through. So that's why I'm using these nip blockers. So I'm just making sure these are, there we go. These come right up against the uh, pins now. I'm going to leave the pins there. So the pins aren't used to hold the fabric down. They're just there to for me to measure against. Apologies if there's a little bit of noise there. If my family were home and they've just all gone out. I could hear them talking in the hallway and slamming the front door, so I apologise if you could hear that. Um, right, so this should looks a lot more even now, this bottom edge. After I've finished blocking this out, I will take the camera off the tripod and just show you what it looks like from this end. So I can take these pins that are along the bottom here that I've just used to measure. I've taken those out now. And then I'm going to put um, some uh, blocking pins in on the side here as well. So I'm just going to measure to make sure that I'm just going to measure right above here. And then I'm going to measure a little bit further up just to make sure that it's the same width all the way up. And it is. So then I'm going to just put... these uh, nip lockers in. You can use pins for this 
I just find it easier to use the nip blockers if I have them. Okay, so now we're just going to do the sleeves. So I'm going to use the nip blockers. I'm just going to put a couple in at the top here as well. Let's have a look at the sleeve here. I'm going to knit an edging onto this sleeve later. I do quite often like to block this. If I'm gonna, if I've done a sleeve like this where I've got to knit on the edging later, so this garment was knitted in that direction, stitches were increased for the sleeves here, they were increased for a few rows here and then cast on for this bit and then knitted in that direction. So all the knitting is going in that direction. And then I'm going to pick up stitches for the sleeve and knit in that direction. And I do quite often think it looks neater if I block this first, because then when I knit up stitches, if the blocked edge isn't 100% even, it doesn't really matter. I'm not actually going to stretch this and pin this because it's stocking stitch. I don't really need to stretch it too much. Fever's lace might be slightly different. So I'm just going to put a nip blocker in there and one in here. And then, I don't think I'm actually going to put anything around on here. Actually, yes, I will. Change my mind. I will put a couple in here just to make sure that doesn't shrink back too much. So I've stretched this a little bit, not too much. I'm not worried about how even that edge is um, because I will be um, taking those out later I will be knitting on an edging there later okay so that's that sleeve done let's have a look at this sleeve here so I'm just going to measure the other sleeve to make sure that these sleeves are matching so what I did was I measured from the wire to the edge of the sleeve on the other side and I'm just going to do the same thing here and I'm just going to put a pin where I want the sleeve to get to. And then I will put the first nip blocker there. I'm actually also going to just measure the depth of the sleeve just to make sure I'm getting it the right depth. Okay, so that is about right. If you're not stretching it too much, then just smoothing it out, which is basically what I'm doing, then measuring the length and stuff shouldn't be too important because just smoothing it out, it should be roughly the right length and depth and everything. But it's always worth to have a quick check. And if it's all over lace and you have to stretch it a bit more, then you do have to make sure that you um, check the width and stuff properly. Then I'm just going to put this in here how much you pin it out around this um, neckline depends I'm just going to put a couple of these in at the back here then I'm just going to smooth out the front and put one in there and one here I don't tend to pin it like all the way around the neckline. I think that looks okay. So I'm just going to take the camera off and um, show you what it looks like from this end. So you can see the full size of the garment there. So we got wires coming up here, wires across the top, and then just nip blockers for the rest. If you don't have nip blockers and blocking wires, then you just have to make do with pins uh, and maybe a string. Uh, so where I put the um, blocking wires, you could possibly use string. If you have any questions, just ask below this video.